Um, prior to retiring from Panama in October 2014, had several positions in government news agency as CEO, chief uh, editor in chief, and head of business news. And myself had the pleasure of covering an assignment with Dato once upon a time in Switzerland, France, I was mistaken. And so. <laughs> that resonate the local audience. As the Chief Executive Officer of Media Prima Audio, uh, Nazri is in charge of its overall strategy and operation to further strengthen its position as a leading radio network. And then my left is Madam Mediha Mahmoud, the CEO of the Communications and Multimedia Content Forum, CMCF Malaysia. Um, Mediha is a legal and regulatory professional with community of 20 years of post-qualified experience in top legal firm and public research companies. Um, and then currently now as a CEO of uh, CMCF beginning 1st November, 2023. And I'm proud to say she's alumnus, graduated from uh, degree in law from International Islamic University Malaysia. Okay, let's begin our plenary session number one. And uh, we invite Yang Bagi Dato to share your thoughts on the leadership in media industry, navigating challenges and embracing change. Okay, salam sejahtera. Good afternoon. When I was coming here, I went past one very pretty building called Sri Petis. Petis. So, I remember that it is the, the, one, of the one of the houses owned by Bank Negara Malaysia. And Petis, in the Malay language is money, right? So money is important in the in the media industry these days because uh, without funding, uh, it's very difficult to move these days because the whole landscape has changed in the sense that you have uh, the online space and you get Google and Facebook taking a big chunk of the advertising revenue. Then in the media landscape, I think as president of the MPI, as representing media houses, we are trying, I use a very strong word, educate the PR professionals. Uh, one of the top guns uh, is here, uh, Tuan Jafri. Uh, so, you know, we have this situation where the public relations communicators deal with their clients and they come and try to seduce the media you know the kind of thing the, the inequality where you see the, the difference where they've gotten money from the client then they come to us can you use the story for free and what, what does it mean for us and who, who, who pays for the, 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 our upkeep and all that? This paradigm, there has got to be a paradigm shift from now onwards in the sense that if you deliberate with your client, if you talk to strategize the content which is for Halak Ramai, for people to, to know, then you must factor in the money. The pitches is very important. Without that, who is going to pay for the, the salaries of the reporters and the sub-editors. You have gotten the money from the client. So the client has got to be told. This is the new landscape. Uh, I met one uh, editor-in-chief in Sarawak last week. Dayak Daily, very fiery woman. No money, no talk. Ah. That's what she was saying. If the item is very newsy, is of public interest, we will carry. But it is something that it is of reputational advantage for your client or for, for something where you can actually gain profit by the exposure, then you should be paying. If not, then why don't you use Facebook or LinkedIn? Why are you using the third party? Because in this day and age, 
things have changed. In the old days, you you say, oh, newspapers are those, uh, they, they are in, in it because they have chunks of advertisements. But these days, people are very, very uh, mindful about how they spend. And if you are mindful of how you spend and how the money is get, gets channeled into Facebook and Google, then this paradigm shift, you got to factor in. Anyway, I'd like to congratulate uh, my partner here next door, but he is really hot because he's in hot FM. <laughs> he, he manages hot FM. And this is also a paradigm shift where you deal with uh, new elements in the media industry. That is something is very interesting. And I was in uh, Kuching last week. There is this new radio station called Kupi Kupi FM. And Kupi Kupi FM also uses, uh, I we were very impressed in the sense that they are very Perpaduan based, very, uni, very uni, uh, uni, unifying. They use the Iban language, they use the Penan language, they use Orang Ulu. And the Chinese and the Indians can understand. So can you imagine that the, the ecosystem over there in Sarawak is a whole new ball game. And we were thinking about, we at MPI were thinking that we'd like to promote that radio station as, as a symbol of unity uh, as we go on next year. That's, that's all for the moment. Huh? <laughs> and I, if I over speak, then abyss. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dato. Uh, but this, can, can we ask you one question. Um, you can see that, you know, there's one question about the rise of digital platform, as you say just now. From your perspective, um, how can traditional media organization maintain their credibility and relevance in the, to face these changes in the world now? Thank you for the question. Um, we at the Malaysian Press Institute are also undergoing change as a transition. We were concentrating on the media houses previously. How do we give training to journalists and all that? But nowadays, I think we also have uh, changed our tactic. We also reaching out to university and college students. So we want to make the students who are going to be entrants into the job market next time to be newsroom ready. So newsroom ready, we, we are emphasizing on the ability to handle equipment, mobile phones and cameras. And nowadays you have a mobile phone, you are set. You can do many things, you can do a podcast, you can do a transmission on, on Instagram and TikTok. And these are the these are the medium that people are using. So as, as we move forward, the ability to handle such equipment is very important. So you have to be multi-skilled, multi-talented because employers in the future are looking for people like that. If you say uh, that you can only write, uh, that, that is the old, old way. I remember during the time when we first Banama started the radio station, we asked our reporters to go and cover. They told the boss, say, ini bukan dalam kita punya surat perjanjian. <laughs> takna. Nowadays, if you are belong to the takna category, they also show you the pintu lah. <laughs> they show you the door. So this, the ability to be multi-skill, ability to handle gadgets is very important because on our part, we are also trying to reduce the cost for the entrepreneurs, for the business owners. Because if the business owner sees that the student or the, the job entrant is multi-skill, they will take. If you only go in one aspect and then you say, oh. And the other thing, I was meeting the owner of Wanaka, Malaysia. They are opposite Angkasa Puri. It is a very Tamil... <laughs> It's a Tamil-based portal, but they also have some English, some Bahasa, Malaysia. They say that this, we don't want to think about whether the person is skilled in writing or in able to speak. We want attitude first. The positive attitude, responsibility, sense of responsibility is number one. Skills acquisition can be acquired. If you don't have a bad attitude, they don't want to take. So you may have good skills, but you have bad attitude, also you won't find that placement in the workplace. Macam tu lah, Doctor. 
Thank you, Laptop. Um, okay, now we want to hear what Ante, uh, Nazi, Mr. Nazi would say about uh, this topic. Uh, the first question or the second? Uh, no, about uh, the, the topic. Uh, yeah. um, Assalamualaikum. So for radio that has gone through many changes and radio in Malaysia has had um, kiranya, a lot of history behind it even before Merdeka. Now, uh, what radio has done is that communication of spoken word. Um, and this is something that is always transitioned through many, many generations, many, many technologies. So uh, when it came to the 80s, when TV came in big time, uh, music video, upper MTV and all that came, they all said that uh, TV will kill the radio star, but it did not. So then came CDs and then uh, music streaming said that it's going to do the same thing. It did not. So until today, inshallah, it's still going on with all the technologies and podcasts now is becoming a big trend, especially in Malaysia. Baru maybe in the last one year plus lah. Uh, well, since plus kejap lah, let's put it that way. Okay. So radio ni, Dia memainkan peranan lebih kepada uh, that communication, that that intimacy, that communication that connects with one person rather than 10,000 or 1,000 or 1 million, one person that you are speaking to. And then it's more localized ataupun um, just like uh, Datuk said just now about Kopi Kopi in Sabah and Sarawak, they speak to their own people in their own dialect. So semua boleh faham. Right? Kita pun selain daripada Hot FM di bawah Media Prima, kita ada Mole FM. Mole FM speaking to the Pantai Timur uh, residents of the community like Kelantan, Terengganu and Pahang. They have their own different dialect. And they have a different lifestyle uh, di Pantai Timur. Kan? Um, siapa dalam ni daripada Kelantan atau Terengganu? Anyone? Ada uh, kan? I'm sure there is. So, we did this specifically because habit Mereka di Pantai Timur berlainan daripada kita ni di KL. Kan? And they speak differently, they share their hobbies differently. Um, certain things are the same, tapi it's that connection that they would uh, that they want to have. right? And how we make money in this day and age? We have to stick out from all the noise and distractions. So kalau dulu kita punya competition is TV. Now competition is uh, and then competition is radio to radio. Now it's not. Competition is really digital. But that doesn't mean kita tak embrace. We have to embrace. So our platform, uh, semua radio stations sekarang kalau notice, mesti diorang ada digital platform. Ada Facebook ke, Instagram ke, TikTok ke, mesti ada. Uh, in YouTube. For radio, now we have our streaming platform which is uh, like for Media Prima, we have Audio Plus, Astro Radio, other shop, you know. Um, but we are working under Commercial Radio Malaysia, working on a unified app to have all the radio stations, inshallah, in the next one year to be available on all, it's called AHU lah, to be available on all smart cars, smart speakers, smart TVs. That means it's all presetted because you get only the local content. And this is very important. Although everything is happening around the world that you get from anywhere, any platforms, it is still important to touch base about your local, what's going on in terms of your entertainment news and all that. And if we don't have that, I can tell you, basically it's going to be wiped out. Lah. It is important to understand also, kalau kita nampak what is happening now in the world, politically, lah, okay, with all these um, issues in the Middle East, uh, also in the US, they are going for their election for the new president end of this year, very soon. The traditional media is not holding on strongly enough. Digital has given so much of power that so much of fake news has been spread. And then really, apa benda yang diorang nak buat to straighten the narrative, they're having difficulties. Sooner or later, in the coming years, if it's not controlled, there's no truth that's going to be coming out. In fact, the truth yang akan keluar ialah the truth yang apa yang berlaku sekarang lah that we know. But in their own country, they are trying to cover the truth, benda tu tak boleh, sampai fake news pun dah jadi believable. So it's very, very difficult. 
And then it's very important for us also at Commercial Radio Malaysia to look into other things, meaning that what the ministry is doing, from YB Fami Fazil, is trying to control the, the digital platform. Sebab sekarang ni, radio, TV, uh, newspapers, ataupun print media, we are all governed ataupun regulated. We are under the framework of the 3R. If you know what 3R is, religion, royalty, race. Kita kena sensitif dengan benda ni because we are a multicultural country, right? Kalau kita tak jaga benda ni, habis. We are always like each other's next lah, okay? Tetapi, benda ni is not happening for the digital space. There's no regulation that is implied. They can do anything they want. That's why influencers, kalau keluarkan content, dia tak jaga perasaan orang lain. Bantai saja. And that's why somehow benda-benda ni jadi is becoming a bigger and bigger bigger issues. There's no control. Even youngsters, kalau dah ada je smartphone apa semua, seawal umur 10 tahun, or even younger, if they have their own account, TikTok ke apa semua, and they come up with anything yang tak sensitive, really can divide people. And this is dangerous. Right? So regulation is key. And also digital platforms like TikTok, Facebook, Meta, although we are a bit too late to do it, we have to regulate them. They have to pay some sort of what we pay, sebab memang kita, kita, kita bayar untuk license. And it gets renewed every year, every two years, every five years, depend, depending. And, and, and it will be re-looked at under MCMC. MCMC akan tengok, have you been a good, like Hot FM ni, bagus ke, have been following the, the rules or broadcasting laws, ataupun nak buat hal. You know, I personally, in my career of 23 years in radio, I dah banyak kali dah ada masalah dengan MCMC lah. Kena warning tu dia cakap, kena fine pun ada. Of small little things, yeah? And this is something that happened to me, I can I can share with one thing. That is not even my fault. So, uh, maybe two lah. At least for context, you faham kenapa. Satu, lagu. Lagu tu, if I can remember, it was by um, Zizi Kirana or something like that. Uh, yeah, you, you were involved in it. You were, you were my, uh, the head of legal team in Astro dulu. So lagu tu ada line yang mengatakan pergi mampus so, something like that lah I'm trying to remember yeah but in context lagu tu cakap pasal boyfriend dia go away get out of my tapi konteks tu disebabkan lirik tu sebut pergi mampus atau pergi mati or something like that so it sounded rude it's like really telling people to kill themselves go into trouble and then it's not the composer artist get into trouble it's the radio station yang kena I was like oh my god Hey, tapi lagu ni dah lepas tak ada orang band ke apa semua, kenapa kita kena? Sorry. Orang complain dekat you. Oh, habis. The other one is because, uh, and I say this in the context of respecting the broadcasting laws, eh? Valentine's Day. Okay, Valentine's Day memang berlaku lah. Tetapi you cannot celebrate Valentine's Day in Malaysia to honor the apa uh, religion lah, okay? But we did not celebrate Valentine's Day. Kita buat benda lain sebenarnya. Celebrate Hari Valentino Rossi because the racer birthday is one day before Valentine's Day. Trying to be creative lah eh. <laughs> Caught the attention. Really orang cakap, wow. But of course, no mention of Valentine's Day. Got into trouble. Said, you are initiating that is Valentine's Day. We did not say it's Valentine's Day. We just, you know, but that's the thing lah, you know. Maybe I was, okay, I admitted and all that. So, kind of warning. With all due respect, there are things that really matters that we have to address, that we have to control. What traditional media is doing is really honoring and respecting the three R's. Digital platform, kalau tak control, it will get out of hand, it will divide people. And this is going to be a massive problem if we don't address this now. It's okay to have it, but to what context? And I believe that adapting to it is good. AI is coming, we're already adapting to it. Uh, we are the first in Malaysia to have AI DJ on Fly FM. We won awards for that, three awards. One Malaysia Book Records, two uh, Hashtag Asia Awards, one Asia Pacific Awards. And we are getting recognized across the globe in media space because of creating an AI DJ. But there's no legal or regula uh, regulation in that yet. If it's used wrongly, again, it will get out of hand and be. So at least kita ni regulated. Kita tahu apa the do's and don'ts lah. So we control based on what we know. 
Tetapi kalau it gets into the wrong hands, that doesn't know how this works, they will go mental and just create anything and everything. And this is where it becomes danger. And Nazi, then the, you can you you said that um, how you see the uh, digital platform um, becoming something that we have to control. But how do you uh, sustain your the traditional radio station and remain not only relevant but also profitable in a market where you know advertisers can go to other places? So this is what Dr. Dr. Yong was saying that PTs is uh, important. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you do that? Radio, just like any traditional media or digital media, even we are we are all storytellers, lah. We have to get really strong storytellers to pull factor and all that. So um, when what we did with Media Prima, especially Hot FM, we had to create that buzz to get people aware about the radio station itself. And radio station, you're just not listening to it, and then you get entertained, lagu, and all these kind of things and all that. But it's actually what we bring that is different. So what we did differently was we brought KJ in when he didn't, you know, he, he was not a minister anymore. That caught a lot of attention until today. Yeah. And he just won the Anugrah Bintang Popular. <laughs> so that's quite strange for him, but it was great for us. So we had to find a way to create, in a way, in, 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 in a word that probably I steal for Don, for, from Donald Trump, you know, making radio great again. I've always been pushing that and saying that radio will never die. You have to create the buzz behind it because people will get attracted to the things that comes out from your product. Doesn't matter where it relies. No? So for us, it's just radio. Radio is now audio. You know, there's not. I just was talking about this earlier. Really, nobody has a radio sets at home. They have Bluetooth speakers. Most of our radio audience is in the car when they are driving. Radio is a great business. Lagi ada traffic jam, we are still in business. We are so happy. <laughs> Please. So one day kalau jam dah tak ada habis business kita. <laughs> so I think that's where it stands in terms of how we have to move forward and adapt to technology. So we cannot run away from it. We have to find a way of how to become that uh, in the into the ecosystem and 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 don't stop expanding and evolving. Okay, thank you so much. Now we turn to Madam Mediha and your thought on the leadership in the media industry, navigating challenges and embracing change from your point of view. Okay, so these two gentlemen have brought up so many new issues that I've just completely lost whatever points I had in my mind. Uh, but I really think one of the things that we need to understand, and I think both of them have mentioned, is the fact that the content ecosystem has changed dramatically in the last few years. You know, people are still looking at radio as a source of entertainment and information. People are still reading newspapers and relying on journalists, despite the fact that we now have content creators in this very room. We have issues of content creators doing things on social media that broadcasters would never do because they know they shouldn't do. We have citizen journalists who are putting out news faster than the actual professional journalists is doing so because they might not know the ethics behind sharing proper content and the way it should be done. So for us at the Content Forum, we feel that with the influx of content coming from all angles, the fact that we can now get content from so many platforms, so many people who might not have the skills behind not just creativity and understanding the tools, but also what kind of content that you shouldn't put out there because it might be harmful to you or harmful to a community. For us, it's all about making sure that there is also self-regulation being played by everybody. Nazri is right. Digital platforms are going to be licensed very soon. But we also need to look at the fact that users also cannot relinquish their responsibility. Just because the platforms will be responsible because they are licensed doesn't mean that you guys, if you put out content that's harmful out there, you are going off scot free. No, because whatever is illegal offline is illegal online. And many people are still a bit wishy-washy about that. That's why they go online and say a lot of nasty stuff. And then they get surprised if the police knocks on their door. But this is something that you need to be very careful about because even a simple comment that you put under, let's say, a, a news post, that's content. That can subject you to the laws in Malaysia under the Communications and Multimedia Act or the Penal Code or anything else. So the sense of responsibility needs to be instilled in each and every one of us because like it or not, we're all playing a role in this content ecosystem. 
And you know, you can you can trust broadcasters. Contoh yang Nazri brought up the AI that they used for a uh, radio announcer. This was when AI was fresh somewhat, right? So they came up with an AI radio announcer. They didn't need to get approvals for that, but because they knew what they can and cannot do with regards to content. They were transparent about it. They disclosed the fact that it's AI. They were not misleading any listeners to think that it's an actual person in the social media. So that's responsible use of creativity and technology. But again, like they said, when it falls into the hands of people who may not understand the ethics behind it, that's where you get people using AI for deep fakes. You get people using AI for misleading advertisements. Suddenly, you have uh, the astronaut selling cookies, for example, or you know the prime minister peddling certain things. So this is wrong. It is, it's illegal as well. But people who are not aware, or even if they are aware, they're mischievous about it. They think they can circumvent the law. That's where we come in uh, at the Content Forum to make sure that they know that you can go as creative as you like. Use the technology as much as you want, but there are certain rules that you need to remember. We do not want to harm people, do not want to harm communities, don't want to harm yourselves. And there are certain standards and best practices that we all need to refer to. So it's not just not takut lesen kena tari or takut kena fine 20,000, for example, but it's also the impact that your content can have on communities. Contohnya, um, I think I can give the use of words like um, it's very common. Uh, orang guna jakun, batak, sakai, and they use it as a term to to. It's it's, it's, a, it's not a very nice term lah. You got the degrading. Yes, exactly. So batak likes or oh aku jakun tengok KLCC. You know, it's it's something that is used very often for a very very long time, but people are are slowly realizing that it is not something that we should be doing because ada suku kaum orang asli, jakun, sakai, bata, and we shouldn't be using that as a derogatory term. Yeah. And when we talk about this sometimes, kan, we still get pushed back because people say, alah, benda ni tok nenek dah lama guna, kenapa you, why are you, why are you taking it so personally? But language evolves, content evolves, content reflects the society that we are and the kind of thinking that we want to pass on to generations. So that's one of the things that I really want to put out, out there. We are all responsible for the content that we create, the content that we share, and the content that we consume. Okay. It is interesting, though. Um, yeah, the usage, certain words, degrading, um, putting down to certain people. Because I am a bata. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Then, um, you see, the ethical dilemma that you have accounted, how to balance the uh, content regulation, creative freedom, because people say that I want to be creative. Radio people say I want to be creative. Newspaper also say the same thing. TV also say the same thing. But uh, how does CMCF then we get to com these complexities? You know, the usage of the word and also the content that we use. Yeah. Uh, for us, we see that we can no longer rely on um, control and censorship because it, how do I do that? How do I say this diplomatically? Before this, 20, 30 years ago, you know, when, when films came in, in big, bulky films, right? So we had LPF, Lembaga Penapisan Film, yeah. and they had a very important task of making sure that that content is not something that would harm the community, etc. But right now, with the kind of the influx of content that we're getting, it's impossible, it's unfair, it's unreasonable to expect LPF or any government agency to be looking and reviewing and monitoring and censoring. There needs to be a collective responsibility. So for us, we feel that it's 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 balancing act. Right? It's like it's like walking a tightrope. If you tilt too much on this side, you'll be curtailing freedom and creativity. You tilt too much on this side, you might be exposing people to harmful risks. And we feel that the only way to do this is to make sure people understand why the rules are there. Because if you compel them, you say, okay, you cannot say this. Kalau tidak nanti kena saman dua ribu. The the motivation to not do it is not the same if you genuinely know why those rules are in place. If I can give you an example, uh, the most, the most uh, sensitive issue that we try to talk about in the content forum that we have to be very careful about is content relating to suicide. Right? So there are fictional drama, miniseries, TV, that they want to show suicide-related scenes. And then there are journalists who have a duty to report suicide-related news or suicide news. But at the same time, there is also a situation where suicide contagion happens, the weather effect where if you share too much details, if you share suicide notes or method of suicide, etc., yeah. it could lead to, to you know, suicide contagion. So we need to balance between the two. 
But the way we're doing it now is we are currently working with, um, with uh, media practitioners and medical practitioners, mental health advocates, and also the industry to come up with best practices and guidelines for journalists, for uh, fictional content, for people who talk about these issues in conferences, for people with lived experience. You can still go ahead and do it, but you need to know what the, if I can say trigger points are, what you should avoid to make sure that it's not unethical and irresponsible. So this dialogue makes sure that kita tak shock sendiri as CMCF, we think we know everything and we just tell you these are the rules, follow it, you know. It has to be industry-led by people who experience it, by people who are in the media, people who are in broadcast. They come and tell us what their issues are, what their challenges are, and we come up with the rules and best practices that all of us in agree with. Therefore, all of us invest in. And kalau ada orang complain to us at the content forum, then we will look at it and we say you breach it. Most of the time, in fact, 100% of the time, People who have been complained about, when they find out they have breached, they will pay. Betul tak, <laughs> Because they are invested in the code. They know that this code is something that they've agreed with. So that usually is what happens. Okay. Thank you so much. So now I open to the floor for any question that you want to ask. Okay, one sister eagerly want to ask a question. Uh, there's a mic behind there, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, to all panelists. Uh, my name is Nina. Um, I have a question. I think this question is actually for both uh, Encik Nazri and also Puan Maya Mediha. Um, recently, um, there was an issue when KJ actually uh, gave a negative comment, or I think it's what, it was a sarcastic comment uh, to PM, right? And then because of this, um, many people were actually commenting about this issue, but then a lot of people are also actually wait, waiting for Hot FM to give their comments as well. But what we know is that the next thing that I know was the video was taken uh, down. And then the next thing is um, what was the action from MCMC for this thing, for this issue, since a lot of people were commenting as well. Okay, and then I have another question. Uh, in terms of censoring films, right? Uh, what is MCMC's role in censoring film? In since Finas is also doing this uh, part as well. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Nazi, you have to answer that first. You reporter, ka? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, ni on record to record. <laughs> Okay, the cheater name Okay, um, I think what what was done in the context of because he he is KJ, people look up to him because of his the title as an ex minister, and he is also very vocal on kuas kejab with anything related to government. Rightly so, he has the experience to do it. Dia bukannya orang yang tak ada education dan tak ada experience. He was sitting in that chair. Now it's just he's a radio announcer. People must remember that he was an ex-minister. So for him to put that into context, and because it was on Hot FM platform, people take it offensively. But if it was on Kuas Kejap, okay, faham tak? Of course, we don't encourage people to make fun of government, royalties, and all that. We don't do that. But the fact that what he did was spontaneous, that he did not mention any name, nothing whatsoever, people triggered that it was immediately regarded to our, our, apa tu, our leader. Lah. Okay? But in terms of the context, you have to look at it very widely. Don't just put it onto KJ. Don't put it, just put it onto maybe it was coming up from Hong. There were so many people have done it, nobody said anything. It was on TV. It was on uh, other platforms and all that. Whether, tapi sebab dia bukan, tak ada kena mengena dengan kerajaan dulu, I have anything to do with being sitting in that chair. KJ was. You're, that's the only difference. But the fact of the matter is, even we had the conversation dengan orang-orang dalaman apa semua, even our company pun ada kenalan apa semua. They don't have issue with it. Just people just got oversensitive about what he said, but there was no reference to anything or even bring it down. 
And if you look at it in another context, he's connected to all these guys. Dia jumpa dekat tepi minum kopi apa semua on, on, on a natural basis pun. Cuma depan-depan tak nampak lah macam tu. Kan? Because he's just wearing a different hat. So to me, if it was done from other people and all that, then it was different. Then we have to really, okay, what was that meant for? And, and of course, we have to take action on that. But we mentioned that this is nothing that was done intentionally trying to memburuk-burukkan sesiapa. Kalau if you look back to many of the situation that has happened before, banyak benda yang done that is very, uh, say, much more offensive compared to what he has done. So to me, it's like, macam, okay, it's because him lah, KJ. If it was somebody else, nobody even took notice. Man, it was that. But although, yeah, we feel that, no, you shouldn't have done that. Even kalau you nak joke pasal orang lain pun tak perlu pun. Siapa-siapa lah. But on a comedy standpoint, if it was Johan, then probably you laugh it off. Okay? Because he's just not known to become that joker. He's always serious apa semua. Dia joke pun sikit-sikit je, sinis je. Tapi he was trying to do it in a context yang macam boleh tak aku nampak kelakar but somehow it didn't turn out that way lah. <laughs> macam tu je lah. But he's actually a really funny guy if you know him lah kan. I'm sure a lot of people who know him apa semua dia actually quite you know, fun guy. Cuma his persona is done that way ataupun introduced that way to the public. So people expect him to be serious all the time. So buat benda tu tak boleh. So macam eh, kenapa macam tu kan? So the reason of taking it down is not because of taking, we have taken down many of the things and all that. It's just that people were just commenting overboard and all that. So okay, tak apa. There are certain things that is within our control. Then we remove it. So if anything, we just have to deal with the a regulation and we deal with it, we spoke about it and it's a continuous when your conversation because I as President of Commission Radio Malaysia upon I have to face regulators all the time and things happen because we are live you have to remember that radio is live macam TV, berita is live juga macam berita utama and news and all that live tapi kita ni lagi how do you say always in front sebab we always have to do it live. So kelebihan radio ni ialah you can spontan, kena cepat tangkap. Kalau dah terlepas benda tu then okay you have to somehow okay how do you how do you fix this or how do you go back by this and all that. But we always try. We're not we're humans like the end of the day. Eh? We make mistakes also. But it's just that ini benda ni keterlaluan yang menyebabkan orang sakit ataupun uh, affected by it and all that then of course we have to do something back lah. Tetapi kalau macam misalnya semalam banjir, suddenly banjir KL, nobody expected that. We totally change our program. We change our program, we have to update about the banjir and all that because people are concerned. So anything that was funny, we have to drop. We have to be insensitive juga. So suddenly we have to take care, think about what people think. Today, this morning, but was hot, kan ada kes UITM Dungun meninggal, kena langgar, langgar lari. So the parents, tiga parents tu, memang, memang, you know, they really got upset. But we have to find a way how to connect. Again, our radio is about connection. But it's always not perfect lah. Tetapi kalau kita touch benda-benda yang sensitif macam ni, how do we do it? So that satu kita tak keterlaluan ataupun terlalu sensitif. Tetapi when it comes to situation like this, kita pun terasa macam, okay, how do we connect so that people kita think about situasi, situasi yang berlaku. So, story. Story-nya ialah, okay, ni, ni, okay. Last week, uh, Johar dengan AG pergi jumpa the parents ku, Encik Aku Azmi ni, dia explain. Cerita tu went viral. Sebab dia pergi umrah. Dia dapat tahu anak dia ken, uh, meninggal. Dia sampai je dah, dia return balik. Tak buat langsung. Dia sempat doa saja. Lepas tu dia terus balik. He had to cancel his umrah. His first time to go. Lepas tu kita jumpa dia. So today what we did was we follow up. We check out, okay, you know what? We want to talk to you. Because kita punya sponsor Irkas Travel which is Umrah punya uh, apa uh, travel punya agency dia nak bagi balik Umrah untuk gantikan just to give them a surprise so we came we came that connection we call we call the three families not even just Kul Azmi yang seorang daripada Mua tu yang only lorry driver yang dia kata anak dia macam best friend apa semua and we put that story on air and then we call uh, Irkas Travel representative to, to tell the, the news 
bagi tahulah kita bagi paket sponsor menangis so it's all not about just fun funny all these kind of things but when it comes to things that matter about banjir about benda yang sensitif macam ni we also have to connect we play a very responsible role but we're not perfect we try our best yeah there'll be glitches here and there but apa yang saya sensationalize ni is because KJ so of course the opposition apa semua akan bantai dia lah kalau bukan KJ kalau bukan orang politik i think oh okay funny 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 bla <laughs> boleh guling-guling lagi something like that lah all yeah. right so the second one is about the censorship thing okay, uh, okay. So just let me help help uh, everybody clarify. Number one, I am not MCMC. <laughs> <laughs> so MCMC is the regulator. They clockal lay same. They look at everything that has to do with regulations of communications yeah. and multimedia. We are the content forum, which is uh, an industry forum. IIU is one of our members under the civic groups. We also have Media Prima, Astro, and a ton of other associations in. So we're self-regulation. Now for censorship of film, uh, Finas doesn't do it either. Finas is uh, the body that helps to develop the film industry in Malaysia. The only people who censor in this country is LPF. Lembaga Penapisan Film under KDN. And for, for publishing permits pun under KDN. But uh, that is the difference lah. So censorship is purely LPF. Now people always question then, what do LPF censor? Right now they're censoring all films that come into our pawagam. And they also censor or they review the advertisements also that come out here. But the broadcasters now, they I think Media Prima pun about self-censorship, guided by, of course, LPF guidelines and all that. So that's a move towards that juga lah. And I also just want to add on to what, what Nazri was talking about. You know, sometimes content yang macam sensationalized like the KJ thing, and it's a parody, like you said, you know, people have been doing it for years. Um, that one is very easy to, be, to go viral. But the good ones, susah sikit nak go viral. That's, that's, a, that's an issue I think that we have uh, where gossip and sensationalized content can get organic shares very fast. But the good ones, I mean, you know, you talk about giving Umrah trips and stuff like that. Some people might know, big fans might know, it might go pretty far, but tak so viral gossip, perceraian, team F, team B, dan sebagainya lah. So that is something that we all need to work on as well, the kind of content that we engage with. All right. Okay, Datuk, I have one question um, with regard of this. We're talking about, then, Samoradi, he has to go to something about ethical journalism. Not about them, but about it in, in general. Because um, there's a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, reporting that we have, we read, we read, is, in a way, the ethical is some, some, somewhat blur. Yeah? Especially in, 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 in social media and all. But, okay, now, how to foster ethical journalism while ensuring the media organization remain financially viable? Because you have to be as juicy as those people to, to, to be viral, but you cannot do that. So how do we do that? Okay, thanks for the question. Interesting. Um, earlier this year, I think uh, YB Fami, they, he launched the Code of Ethics. Uh, it was uh, created together with the, uh, by the Jabatan Penerangan and with the help of certain media organization and certain universities. But those, for those people who do not want to say that there is a cloud hanging over them, they say, oh, this is uh, done uh, arbitrarily and it's not good, that sort of thing. But then as Puan Madiha was saying, respect and understanding is so important in our industry. So uh, recently, uh, we have been approached. Sometimes, now that I'm in MPI, it looks like it's in a hot seat. So we went to Al Hijra. Al Hijra. So they uh, they might be Muslim band religious, but they are very progressive in their thinking. So they were saying that out there there are lots of uh, uh, part-time uh, journalists or people who also do something on the social media those people who have left the wagon because of retrenchment and all that, they do not have certain exposure or training. Can MPI do something about that? Because there is a large body of people who want the pengitirafan. Pengitirafan that they are there doing something responsibly. responsibly. So can you do a course and all that? That's one. 
The other one was a person in charge of the persatuan wartawan. They are uh, Sambilan and all that. They also come to us and say, do you know we have got 200 people out there uh, who do not have this proper training and guidelines and the ethics is very important. Can you provide? And tomorrow we are seeing one persatuan by the name of Azam. So these are things that we, we are looking at uh, where we want to infuse in them the sense of responsibility when doing this news because uh, whatever you want to be creative, you want to be sexy or whatever, the rules have to be followed because we live in a multiracial society. So these are things that we have to be uh, cognizant about because uh, it's like a tinderbox. Huh? It's like a like mercun. Lah. You know, suddenly you say something wrong, then one one society gets 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 uh, worked up and all that. So we live in we live in this multiracial society, and we try to minimize the effects of that because there are more things that we can focus on rather than petty matters in this country. How to move this country forward rather than talking about small small things. You know, so that's why I like the environment in Sarawak. They they, they are not these people are going into very higher thinking order already. So this is where we, orang Malaya, uh, kita kena tukar kita main fikiran lah. So, so this, this people, I don't know, I was spent there and they say, they want to make, uh, that turn energy from algae, they use hydrogen, all that kind of thing. So I am overwhelmed lah. So we are going back there again. The other thing is that in order to, to straighten the bamboo when young, we are reaching out to the university students out there. And this time, uh, we are also thinking of having a special separate awards for university and college students. So that it's only not only the media practitioners are having the awards every year. So we're going to do it for university students. So, so we have to change our mindset because your students are the feeders to the industry. So we are looking into that. Uh, that's, do I, did I answer your question? Okay, thank God. <laughs> okay, now another question. Okay, say yes. Oh, this yeah. is Dr. Shafizan. Assalamualaikum, Shafizan from um, IRUM. I actually have two questions. Uh, one for Encik Nazri and another for uh, Madam Madiha. Uh, first of all, Encik Nazri, congratulations for making Hot FM the number one radio in Malaysia. And I think um, you are the man responsible for merosakkan KJ. Yeah, but my question is in relation to other things that I've noticed with um, Media Prima Audio is that you have included activism in your uh, programming. That you, uh, for example, Hot FM and Fly FM has been very vocal about the Palestinian and Gaza issue. Um, I think Fly FM even talked about boycotting Bruno Mars concert or something like that. So has this been costly to you when we talk about advertisers and maybe some people are not happy about this type of activism because it's easier to make money through entertainment and things like that. Yeah. So this is my question for uh, Encik Nazri. My question for Madam Madiha, I think it relates to leadership. As you can see, you're the only female there on stage. So what is the state of, um, you know, gender equality, not really in terms of practicing, but in the leadership and decision-making um, level? Because um, for your uh, information, uh, for example, in our Department of Communication, where we study media, obviously, we have more than 100 over students, 70% of which are female. So what are the prospects for them, you know, in terms of, you know, going up to that uh, leadership, uh, what we call it, state? So these are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good question. Very good question. So I think we are proud about what we have done uh, to voice our support for Palestine. And... Yes, it does cost us uh, revenue a little bit. But I think the important thing is, is more about understanding why we're doing it. Because we, we have to uphold the social responsibility and awareness as a radio station. If, we are not, if you don't highlight things yang betul -betul, that's clear, that's right in your face, Actually, we're not doing our job. Lah. Of course, we focus on the local matters, lah, like Banjir, whatever not. Yes. Tetapi, uh, the bigger issue in the world, we, we do have to address it. Um, we did it. 
and uh, we are we glad we did it. Uh, last year we did Solidarity about Palestine. We did a show, full show. Kita kick off Tabung uh, Media Prima Palestine uh, last year in October when October 7 happened. Uh, we are nominated for that actually for Anugerah Sri Angkasa that's coming up in the 26th October. Alhamdulillah. Um, so for us, it's not about getting recognized for it. We know that the new generation are very vocal and we have to be socially uh, conscious about you know um, what what they want and we have to prioritize the content uh, that resonates uh, you know and also important for us to understand where it's going in terms of what we did for hot and 5m and 5m also did strongly push bila michael moore keluarkan lagu hints hall in fact lagu tu kita buat 24 hours kita main lagu tu saja for 24 hours from 6am to 12 midnight lagu tu saja the whole day he caught the attention, even Michael Moore open replied and gave comment and finally he's performing in November in, in Malaysia. So because we did that, we wanted to get the attention and, and we got the attention. Yang, yang akan affect ialah uh, brands yang berkena, berkenaan dengan um, Zionist lah. Okay? So they're already having problems already to advertise on traditional media. Ada je keluar kat social media, mesti kena hentam semua. So, it's already holding back. So, for us, we have to be focused on our audience, our listeners. They are the ones that is giving us the listenerships. So, we have to listen to them and understand what they are going through as well. Like Fly FM, 60% is Malay audience, no matter what. But English speaking lah. It's still 60%, more than 60%. So, they know, but this is not about religion couple, it's about just being human lah, to remind people that you know we, we support that cause and we're getting that uh, attention for it. Bruno Mars was very clear that he was, you know, he, he came out with a statement saying that he supports Israel. So when, when we did that, we did not start it. Somebody else started it, we just continued. That's it. And we got respect for it. We got some audience followers supporting us because we did it. And because of that, many other people outside of Fly FM, they want to join us because of what we believe in. I'm a strong, you know, I myself, even from before my career, I was always about advocating, you know, um, just human rights overall, right? So, benda-benda macam ni, it's like, it's not because what I want to do, it's what we as a company are willing to do and be behind it all the way. Certain things kena akan sacrifice. Benda-benda situation ni is better be on the right side than you know fight for something that we don't believe with tapi 50-50. But it's up to you to decide what you want to do. We as a company, we have decided and we're not going to stop and keep doing it. Hopefully people follow through and hopefully there's an end to all this situation that's happening now across the world. But if anything to do with Malaysia, Malaysia comes first. Malaysia in terms of to, to protect them to anything lah, to support uh, situation, victims, yang apa yang berlaku, apa semua, we are always aware, we're always there. And we always have to listen to them. If anything happens, we have to support. So whether this family just lost their kids uh, from an accident, to banjir, to whatever that's going to come. It is hard sometimes to think about this, tapi kalau kita tahu yang this is the right thing and we get recognized for it and we become that voice, then that's what we have to do. We are an audio business. Yeah, that's pretty much my Thank you. Um, thanks. Great question on women leadership roles in this industry. I can share with you that I personally have worked for two uh, lady CEOs. When I'm right now in this being smack in the middle of the content industry, I see a lot of women in leadership roles. That being said, there's still, there's still lots of room for improvement. There are still some people who think about uh, you know, the stereotypes and stuff like that. That's something that we all continue to work on, not just us women, but also our, our men friends who are allies to this cause. But I, do like, I would like to share something that was shared with me when I first was given an opportunity to actually take a very high role. And I was wishy-washy about it. I was going, you know, I, I don't know if I can do it. I don't have the experience. And this advice was ironically given to me by a man, uh, Datuk Suhaimi Sulaiman. So I was talking to him about it. I don't know if I should take this role. And he just looked at me and in, in that way of his and he said, 
You know, Mediha, it's because women who are given opportunities to take leadership roles and doubt themselves and don't take it, that's why many incompetent men get into leadership. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that was like a slap on my face. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I mean, you know, you, when, when opportunities do come to you, yeah. if somebody believes in you enough to give you that role, to offer you that role, don't do yourself the disservice by doubting yourselves. You know, you go for it. Um, and I think right now, the glass ceiling might still be there, but it's a lot more breakable than it used to be. It's a lot more fragile. And it's got a lot to do with the fact that we've got our allies with us uh, in this course, inshallah. All right. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Because I have one question for Datuk, though. Um, it's about in your leadership at the Malaysian Press Institute, how do you see the role of media in shaping public perception and addressing the challenges posed by misinformation, especially during the time of crisis? Thank you. I suppose the constant exposure and training is uh, valuable, beneficial because some people when they go into the job and then they, they will follow what they have to do and they're based on what they know. But along the way, it's very important to be able to give them new thoughts, new exposures. So as we are in the Malaysian press institute, we have been meeting a lot of people this time with changing tact and we are reaching out to people to so that in terms of crisis or whatever, they, are, they know how to pen the right narrative. For example, in, in the case of the GISB, that sort of thing, and we met up with Suhakam. So on the October 29th, they're coming to tell the media how you treat the reporting of these cases because it involves children. So if, if it's the wrong way of reporting, then it will go, the perception will be wrong. So we believe in constant education and because we are a training institute, we reach out to people that have got the information and the right information. For example, we reach out to Tanaga National yesterday. They were saying that the energy literacy level in Malaysia is not that high. Uh, there are a lot of things about it. Electrical tariff, about uh, renewable energy and ESG. How do you present the case very coherently? So we, we are going to reach out to them and in December, we, we have the experts coming from those, those, those institutions, those companies. So it is the constant training that's very important to allow the, the, the journalists to able to navigate whatever uh, pitfalls that there are ahead of them. So if you are equipped with the right information, then you can write with better conviction. That's what we believe. So you're constantly giving, giving them uh, exposure, training, and that will be the way to go forward. And not just uh, like we, are, we used to be known previously, giving awards or ring in the middle of the year, June. <laughs> That's it. But we are going to be more, more visible this time. And, and, and to add to the question about women in, in, in media, I think there are, I know there are four in Malaysia who are helming the place. In the star, you have Datin Paduka, Esther, Ng. Okay? In uh, News Race Time, you have uh, Juan Paranas Karim being the group editor. And in Banama, as the head, who was previously the editor in chief, you got. Norul Afida, one Norul Afida, and there was this very fiery red chili in 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 Kuching, uh, in Dayak Delhi called Lencheng. Dayak Delhi is and they, they are straight rocking women, no money, no talk. That's what she was saying. So I know there are four very dynamic women in Banama, a major major institution in News Race Time, and the Star, and in uh, Dayak Delhi, and I think in Suara Sarawak, I think the head is also a woman. Can't remember her name. So women are taking more, taking away from us. Yeah. Huh? Say Nasri, huh? we got to be careful. <laughs> okay. So, any more questions? Dr. Shafizan, you okay with answer? Yeah, even in our department also, the men uh, somehow rather, we have only three lecturers, <laughs> men lecturers in the department, <laughs> four. 
<laughs> ada soalan lagi? Ada, okey. Syafi, come. Uh, someone has uh, menyahut suruhan laki-laki. Okey. Okey, um, bismillah. I have read recently one of the news that um, there are many people will be like 700 people will be laid off. Uh, something like that. So I would like to know about future careers lah. What do you find? Uh, like we, the new generation, we want to find a new job. What do you, what qualities are you find uh, for your new recruiting? Okay, I start dulu lah. Eh? Okay. So the 700 people that was laid off from TikTok, it was no surprise. Uh, I went to visit TikTok three weeks ago. You put your staff currently at that time was about 4,000 plus in Malaysia. Am I? I put to Kaju, more than Media Prima. Media Prima 2,300 now. Lah. So then they cut 700. And immediately, Cool 101, one of our station, offered a job for the people who got laid off. <laughs> it went viral. So the thing is, we know that AI came from last year, upon, and we know that everybody was saying that it will replace some jobs that is every day buat benda yang sama aja. Okay? Benda tu akan berlaku. And you can see that happening already. So TikTok made a bold move. But also other companies that you haven't heard, maybe you have, banyak ada ada cut pun. Even Meta pun dah cut apa semua and all that. But it's not, it's, it, you know, cuma TikTok ni was the big, big deal. In fact, our companies pun are already exploring, trying to deploy some AI to do the jobs that is habitual every day, benda yang sama saja. Right? So, like for radio, we are already venturing into voiceovers. Voiceovers ni kadang-kadang pakai suara siapa-siapa lah yang ada talent, yang jadi mak, bapa apa semua untuk iklan. Okay? And then you actually have to pay voiceovers. And they, some voiceover talents are actually making some good money just doing voiceovers. So what's happening with AI is they, cut, they are cutting down the middleman. So middleman, the agents, orang tengah ni apa semua, all this will disappear, right? So what it does is certain things they will replace some jobs, somebody yang harian, tetapi it will create more jobs. AI is actually creating more jobs for us to explore other things, to expand the horizon. And we see that in radio itself. So but now we can see, oh, we've got free time to do other things. I myself are using AI. I'm not... I'm not going to lie to you. In fact, CEO office, other PA, other business uh, administrator, other my uh, well, PA to a PA lah. So, ada tiga orang sebenarnya. Now, I just use one. Because I don't need the business uh, exec to do my paperwork and all that. I can just use AI and get it done. Some speech I bought pun, I pakai AI je. And then I edit lah, of course. Okay? So, it's already been done. I'm already saving cost there because nak cari talent yang macam ni pun susah sebenarnya. There are certain roles yang nak cari actually susah. And certain things yang boleh keluar ganti dengan AI, I ganti AI aja. I don't need to spend cost to hire a, an actual person. Tapi ada departments yang boleh improve in terms of buat iklan suara VO. I can just clone my voice and then I get royalty from it. You can use my voice for commercial ke apa semua boleh. And I get extra money. No problem, but they don't have to hire an actual voiceover because you cut more than you save about maybe 70 80 percent of your actual cost to pay for that one voiceover. Uh, so, benda -benda macam tu lah. but then you have spending more things for other things. So, even my whole department now, uh, we have about radio ni ada about 120 staff now together, 80 uh, staff yang behind the scenes, more than about 30. Uh, about uh, on-air talents, okay, radio. So, it will not replace the talents lah, although AIDJ apa semua, diorang pun masih mula-mula kita buat AIDJ, are you going to fire all of us? <laughs> so, no. We just did that to certain things yang boleh buat. Maksudnya, AIDJ ni boleh kerja every day, no off days, no sick days. And there's no claim anything like that. So senang. I just pay pay one off and that's it. Tapi I ada prompter. So I created one new job for the AI DJ. No DJ tapi ada prompter. So prompter now is a new position that we just created. And there'll be more. So in the terms of where the business is going, 
yeah, some jobs yang boleh buat automated, it will be replaced. But it will start creating new jobs and it will keep expanding. So for everyone that's still learning, you know, in their own respective punya, uh, education, you have to think, okay, keep learning new things because I myself own, I upskill myself. I'm learning about AI. I'm learning about anti-corruption. I'm learning about Mandarin. I'm learning, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm not stopping. Although I'm a CEO and president, I know for a fact the world is changing. I myself have to unlearn and relearn and reskill myself for what's to come because the world is changing so fast that if you don't adapt, that's it. You just don't have a job. Lah. I think that's where you have to be prepared for. All that. And also, I think <laughs> one of the things that we will always look for is things that AI cannot give to us. The fact that the, you, your humanity, your creativity, your resilience, your agility, because AI will, you know, it's, it's based on the, whatever it is that you train it with. You can have a perfectly grammatically perfect speech. But the best speeches, I'm sure, if you hear, are those with personal experiences being put in them. With case studies, with humor, with wit, and AI boleh lah buat lawa, but you know, it's very, very, yeah, lain, very different. <laughs> very lain. So, I think what I would give advice to you, if I can, the same advice I give to my sons as well, I only have sons, is that you must constantly have this passion to learn new things. You cannot be a one-trick pony. You cannot graduate with law and think, I'm just going to be a lawyer, make a million bucks and, and live happily ever after. No, they do what does we does. Continuous learning, always find what's new that you can be a master of. Because no one can replace you if you keep on replacing who you are today. The new skills that you have, the new talents that you have. So I think agility is important, resilience as well. And also the, the, everything that makes you a human being, it's always going to be needed. Macam betul lah, macam, you know, jobs have been replaced many times throughout the decades. We used to pay, dekat toll tu, we paid a person, right? Now you've got RFID lah, touch and go and whatnot. So these things will happen. But again, jobs will be produced with new technology. And if you are agile enough, if you upskill constantly, inshallah, you'll be okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, recently, I attended one function where the former head of uh, Microsoft Malaysia, I think Wan Begum was there, and I was asking her, now that we hear people are very apprehensive about jobs being lost to AI and all that, I, we asked her about, do you have problems getting people to work for you because you have so many machines at your, at your back end call? She was saying, actually, it's very difficult to find people who can really think hard and be, to be able to command the machine. So they are looking for very, very good people who can actually harness the power of those machines so that they can deliver. Because it's, they, she has got Microsoft with her, all the machines, but then she, yet she's looking for humans in order to harness these particular job functions in her own company. The other thing I was going to say is that there is one lady I met from Media Prima. She is a news reader, but she's hot. Hot in the sense that she's well sought after as MC. MCs and at weddings and all that. So these are things that if you are in the communication field, you must not only think about the way, oh, I, I should join a newspaper company or a news agency or the radio station. There are very big openings for you in, in this whole wide world because as I was told by certain CEOs and all that, they need people who can carry the message on behalf of the organization. If you are articulate and you are able to capture what the essence of that institution or that company, you are set because you're going to be the spokesman. Because if you look at in, in, the, in the United States scenario, only here is that only the menteri can talk lah. The, yeah, only menteri, the wife, the deputy menteri pun tak boleh cakap lah. But in American context, the spokesperson can be other people because they are trained to know so much about those institutions. And I suppose over time this will evolve because you cannot get the menteri to be in seven places in one day. You you need the juru cakap, you know. So these are things that you got to be aware of. You got to be 
good in your work, in your studies, in, about the knowledge, and then be articulate and you present it well. And this is the very, very, very commodity that people are looking in the future. Uh, thank you. So, okay. So, to wrap to this uh, discussion, one theme I stood out is adaptability. So, yeah. So, whether it's navigating digital disruption, responding to audience shift, or addressing ethical and regulatory challenges, leadership in media industry is about embracing change while staying grounded in principles to ensure that media serves the public good. Our speakers have given us concrete examples how leadership, strategy, and vision can help organizations not only survive, but thrive in the industry where the only constant is change. Yeah, as, I, as we move forward, let us take lessons from today's session and apply them to our own work, um, whether in content creation, media strategy, or as a student. Now, the media industry will continue to evolve, and it's up to us as leaders, creators, stakeholders to ensure that we guide it in ways that promote innovation, inclusivity, and responsibility. So once again, a big thank you to Dato Yong, Mr. Nazri, and, and also Madam Mediha for their time, insights, and contribution. And thank you all for your participation and engagement in this crucial conversation. Let's continue to lead with vision, embrace change, and inspire the future of the media industry. So as we say in TV, back to you, Janan. All right, thank you very much to Dr. Harmi and to our moderator for this panel discussion. And thank you once again very much to Dr. Harmi, Dr. Yong, Mr. Nazri, as well as Madam Madiha for sharing your valuable expertise and experiences with us. Let's give a round one more time of applause to our moderator and panelists for this discussion. With that, ladies and gentlemen, to recognize our distinguished panelists, today we would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Tengku Siti Aisha, Head of Department of Communication, accompanied by Dr. Harmi, moderator for this today panel discussion to present the token of appreciation to our lines of panelists. Please welcome. First up, I would like to invite Dato Yong Soo Hyung, President of the Malaysian Press Institute, MPI, to receive the token of appreciation. Please welcome. Our next panelist, I would like to invite Mr. Nazri Noran, CEO of Media Prima Audio, to receive the token of appreciation. Please welcome. Please give one long time of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And last but not least, I would like to invite Madam Madiha Mahmoud, CEO of Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Content Forum, CMCF, to receive the token of appreciation. And now we are hoping for all panelists, moderator, as well as Dr. Aisha to stay on stage as we are about to take a photography session. Thank you once again to our moderator as well as panelists and Dr. Aisha for the panel discussion right just now. Please join me in giving another warm round of applause to all of them, ladies and gentlemen.
And right now we'll have a short photography session together with our panelists. So we're hoping all ladies and gentlemen to stay at their own seats and we will have our cameraman to take the pictures and put up your best smile. Thank you. All the audience may fill in the seats in the middle so that you can be captured on the camera. All right, thank you very much. With that, ladies and gentlemen, and now we will have a short break at the banquet hall. So hoping everyone could enjoy some refreshments in the banquet hall and do be back in this main hall by 3.45 p.m. for the final session of the day. With that, thank you everyone and enjoy the refreshment. We'll meet again.